Hey, what's up guys, it's Sean here. Now with the recent release of TensorFlow 2.0, it's become so easy to train your own neural networks for any image classification dataset. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can take any dataset of raw images and create a classifier for it in TensorFlow. And I'm also going to show you how you can use Google's free cloud GPU to train it. So I'm going to break this down into five simple steps. Now, step one is to go out and get the images for your dataset and then label them according to their class category so that the neural network can learn what features of an image relate to its corresponding label. So for this step, you could either take your own photos and manually label them, or you could go out and find an existing dataset online. And trust me, there are tons out there. I'm actually going to search for a dataset of cats and dogs to classify. And there happens to be one on Kaggle.com. So let's download that, unzip it, and see what's inside. Now we have a test and train zip. So looking at the training data first, we have 25,000 images, and they are all already labeled with either cat or dog in the file name. So that's step one done. So then step two is to create a Python script so that we can import and create our training data set. So to save on having to install stuff, I'm going to show you how to set up Google's free cloud computing service to do this step entirely online. So we first search for Google Colab, click on this link, and then create a new Python 3 notebook. And this starts up a CPU runtime, but we can easily switch to a free GPU by going to runtime and change runtime and then select GPU. Also, since we're going to use TensorFlow 2.0 for our model, let's make sure that it's installed. Now, Google Colab is conveniently linked to your Google Drive. So if you click on File and Locate in Drive, it takes you to a default folder in your drive where all the new Google Colab notebooks are created. So if we upload our training zip to this folder, we can eventually access it from our Google Colab notebook. But at the moment, if we run the ls command from our notebook to list the files in the runtime directory, it doesn't actually have access to our drive yet. So we need to mount it to our runtime. And this will ask you to sign in and then give you a passcode to continue. And now we can navigate to that folder and then follow the path to your uploaded training data. We can then unzip it using the zip file library. Now this won't be extracted to your Google Drive, but instead to the runtime directory, which we can see by running the ls command. So next we want to load all the images and their labels into memory. So the OS library has a function that lists the name of all files in a given folder. Then we can use the OpenCV library to read the image file as a pixel array and store all of these in a list. And since the corresponding label is in the file name, we can extract numerical labels for each image by assigning the label 1 if it has dog in its name, otherwise the label 0 for a cat, since neural networks work best with numbers. So now that we have our training images and labels loaded into our Python variables, we need to do a bit of refining, which brings us to step 3, which is to pre-process the data. Now, in case you're wondering why we actually need to pre-process the data, if we browse through the raw images, we see that they are all different dimensions and sizes, but a neural network requires each sample to have the exact same dimension and size. So what we'll do is take the largest square crop from each image and resize its height and width to a fixed value. And in code, this involves finding out the smaller dimension length of the height and the width, and then crop the image to a square. And then we resize it to the specific value, like 96 pixels. Also, since both cats and dogs can come in all sorts of colors, this just adds more noise and unhelpful complexity to our model. So let's convert each image to grayscale, which removes the three RGB layers and gives us just a single pixel brightness value instead. And then we'll finally return the normalized image. Now let's display the before and after of some images to verify that we are pre-processing our data correctly. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with our cropping and resizing. So let's just convert each image to its pre-processed result. And just one little thing to note is that if our dataset is very large and taking up a lot of RAM, we need to be careful with creating new copies of the data. So that is why I am pre-processing each image one by one. And then finally, because we converted our image to grayscale, we need to expand the last dimension to be a single channel in order to use convolutional layers in our neural network. 
Now, if you're not too familiar with convolutional neural networks, I have a video explaining that in the description. All right, so now that we've pre-processed our images, step four is to define the layers that would make up our neural network architecture. So we first import TensorFlow and check the version. And now if you're new to TensorFlow 2.0, I also have a tutorial for that. Then we can use the high-level tf.keras API to create a sequential model that takes in a sequence of layers that needs to transform the input data into classification predictions. And let's start that list with a convolutional layer. And if you forget what arguments it takes in, we can just press tab to get a snippet of the documentation for it. And let's go with 16 filters, a kernel size of 3 by 3, padding equals same, and the ReLU activation function. And also remember that for any first layer of a tf.keras model, we need to specify the shape of an input sample. We can then add a max pooling layer to downsample the output's height and width by half with a pool size and stride of 2x2. Two two. And it's common to repeat this combination a few times, but doubling the number of filters each time to offset the reduced size from the downsampling. Then we just flatten the output to pass it to a couple of dense layers and then the final dense layer that outputs a probability for each of the two output classes. Now we just need to specify an optimizer and the type of loss function, which is a sparse categorical cross entropy if our labels are just class numbers. And we can also display the accuracy as the metrics. And finally, we're up to step five, which is to train the model. So we'll call the model.fit function with the training images and labels and a number of epochs. Let's also save the weights of the model after training by specifying a save path to the save weights function. Okay, so we've trained our model and it shows an almost 90% accuracy on the training data, but what's really important is how well it can classify unseen images of cats and dogs. And this is what the test set is for. So we can use the handy Google Colab library called files, which lets us select a bunch of files to upload directly to the runtime from our computer. Now, if we check the current directory, the uploaded files are all there. And this uploads variable is the dictionary of each file's name and data. So to get the file names, we can just take the keys. We can then get a list of test images by calling our load image function on each file and also pre-process the loaded image. Then we will create a new model with the same layers and then load the weights that we had saved earlier. And then we can get the prediction probabilities by calling the model's predict function on the list of images. And finally, we can display all the images and their predicted class label to see how well our model can classify new images of cats and dogs. Woo, looks like we got 20 out of 20, 100%. And lastly, if you did want to grab the saved weights from the cloud, run the ls command to get the names of the files in the runtime, and then call files.download with the names of the weight files that we want to get. So you just saw how you can code up and train your own neural network for any image classification dataset by following those five steps. And I'll link the source code in the description below for you guys to test out on your own datasets where you'll most likely need to change the input image size and also the network layers to suit your dataset's complexity. But anyways, I hope this video at least gives you a clear understanding of how you can use deep learning for practical computer vision. And there will be more tutorials for practical application of deep learning using TensorFlow 2.0. So make sure you keep an eye out for those. And until next time, keep learning like a machine. Bye.